everybody, it's me, Jennifer from Little Model Foxes. I just wanted to say hi and do a tool tip on uh, scribes and punches today. So if you are out there and you have some questions about that, let me know. Um, it looks like you are, uh, everybody's joining us slowly but surely. Hey, Ann, how are you? Hey, hi, hello everybody. Yeah, so I do some tool tips on um, basically your uh, scribes and punches and alternatives and what you can do with them. So um, if you have any questions, like I said, uh, throw them in the chat and if I see them, I'll, I'll answer them if I can. Or if you have any tips yourself for these, I'll write them in there for everybody to see. So I think everybody's pretty familiar with center punches that are um, just your standard center punch for doing things like, you know, drilling for uh, before you before you drill, you know, just a standard center punch like this one. And these are really helpful, hi everybody, uh, for getting things started for when you're about to, to drill because it allows the, the drill bit to center on some place. And drill bits don't cut on their point. They cut on the outside edge. So they really have to have something to bite into so that they can go in a little more easily. Hey there. And do, using something like a center punch allows your drill bit to center as well as catch an edge so it can cut. So it actually helps you know extend the life of your drill bits by center punching and help you drill a little more accurately. But sometimes you need something that is gonna make a, a very precise center punch in exactly the place that you want to do it and these sometimes get a little bit like rounded on the end because you're smacking them hey michelle uh because you're smacking them with you know a hammer into your metal that's usually on a steel bench pin and so they have a tendency to get dull so i wanted to show you a way to correct that also there are um you know other things that you can use as center punches that work really well and usually you're hitting them with a hammer, so you want to kind of be a little bit selective about what you're using. But, I mean, you could use something like, you know, taking an old nail and making your own. And, uh, oh, hey, how are you? Um, so, you know, you can actually use an old nail and sharpen it for a center punch. Or, you know, just use a nail. Um, but these are old um, drifts and center punches that are from the hardware store that have been adapted for this purpose. The the reason that these can be a little awkward is because they're kind of fat and heavy. So it makes it a little difficult to see exactly where you're trying to like make your center punch mark accurately. So the wide center punches can be a little hard for that. So having something that's a little slender and sharp makes a little bit of a difference. So the other thing that you want to sort of do when you are putting a center punch mark down is make sure that you're coming at it from an angle. So while you're looking at it, don't just sort of like set it on top of your mark and hope for the best when you hit it because then it can jump, it can move. So what I always do is tip it away from me and bring it up to the spot that it's gonna be center punching. So I can see the point and where it's connecting with my metal and then I'll bring it up to that center punch spot. But again, if these aren't sharp, um, sometimes the center punched hole can be you know, big or weird, and if it's a very delicate, precise hole you want, something big and weird is not the best option. Um, and it can also sort of ding your metal in a way that's not really great. So, what you could do, I've got a little sanding disc uh, on my flex shaft, and what I'm gonna do here is just take this down to a little bit more of a tapered point, and spinning my center punch as I do this, and I say center punch, not scribe, because there's a difference between center punches and scribes. Scribes are usually used to make a long line, so it's a little bit different than a center punch, and are usually relatively sharp. There we go. So I've actually um, changed that up a little bit, changed the pitch of my center punch, so it's a little bit uh, more of an angle than kind of squared like that, but a little bit more of a 60 degree and that'll give me a little bit cleaner mark and I can see it a little more accurately when I'm placing it. So that can be really helpful. But like I said, you know, if you have an old broken drift or a you know, punch like this, it makes it really easy to kind of adapt these, you know, for a new tool. Um, but scribes are a little bit different. Scribes and like scratch alls, A-W-L, are these kinds of tools. And these are, this is an awl, which is usually used for sort of jabbing things, marking your way around. Um, and they usually have a really good center punch tip on them as well. But because they have a plastic handle, you don't want to hit this with a hammer because it can shatter 
the handle on these old tools. So, you know, if you have something like this and you want to use it for a center punch, see if you can cut off the back end and sand it down so you don't have any sharp edges and you could actually adapt that as a center punch. Um, but it works great as a scribe. And scribes are usually used to uh, draw along and make a mark. Uh, usually you're using them in conjunction with a ruler or a straight edge to make a straight line uh, that you can sort of cut along or uh, engrave along or, you know, sort of uh, file to do uh, different things. But um, scribing is usually a, a nice sharp tool. These, this is a Japanese scribe or scratch all. And um, these are hand turned and nice and slender so you can see what you're doing. Um, also too, again, has a wooden handle so I wouldn't want to hit this with a hammer. These are pretty delicate on the tip and will bend if I hit it with a hammer as well and damage not only the point but the handle too. So, don't want to do that. So there are some um, scribes out there that are a really great, um, like, uh, oh gosh, like, like a hard, hard, hard steel or tungsten tip on the, the scratch all. And those can be fantastic, yeah, like using a stylus. Uh, to make your mark. That'll work really well. Thanks, Michelle. Hi, hey, hey Chris. Um, so what I like to use, and this is a tip that I learned when I was in grad school with Eleanor Modi, what she'll do is use a, a needle. And needles are fantastic. And these are just needles from like Joanne Fabrics. And I usually have one that is a uh, like a tapestry or darning needle in one end that has a little bit of a rounded tip. And these are good for makeshift um, uh, jump ring mandrels when you need tiny ones, um, or burnishers, so you can use them for all kinds of things. The other end of this I have a, a sharp needle in for sewing, and these are fantastic uh, for scribes and scratches because you can draw them along. They're extremely hard and uh, a polished hard steel, so they will definitely scratch your metal. But you can get a really accurate mark with a needle up against an edge. So if you're trying to sort of make a mark with something like you know, this guy, it has some width to it. It's gonna push you out a little bit from your edge. A nice, sharp, flexible, small, tiny needle like this will get me right against an edge and make a really accurate mark. So I like using the, um, the sharp needles for my scratch all or a scribe rather than um, something that's a little more blunt. Um, and there are other tools that are, you know, super sharp and, yeah, stylus and, uh, Things that are like a titanium, not titanium, but a, uh, um, a tungsten tip that are just like really hard and will keep a really sharp line. Those do not usually need to be sharp and they stay sharp for a long time. They'll give you practically an engraved line when you're doing that. So, um, but yeah, you know, check around, make your own and know the difference between them and what they do. And you'll probably find something that works. And you know, look around, look around the garage, look around you know, your hardware store, and usually you'll find you know, a little selection of, of awls and punches and things, and you know, hardware stores are fantastic for that. I really love doing the um, like garage sales and, uh, and markets where you can find old tools, because you know, this kind of stuff you can pay pennies for and get a really great old piece of steel and adapt it for your needs. Um, you know, drifts and punches are great for that too. Um, this is a, um, a, a punch, but it's got a nice cylindrical tip. So again, great for doing things like a jump ring mandrel and for smaller punching. Um, there are set, set nail punches that are almost like a, um, a little, they have like a little divot in the end. And so these are actually great for making little circle marks on things. So there's all kinds of cool, scratches and awls and uh, scribes out there that you can use for making dents and scratches and holes. So, um, so yeah, if you have any questions, let me know. Also, uh, just to give you a heads up, it's just sort of a quick tool tip tonight on the difference between them, what, what you can do with them. And um, I wanted to tell you about some of the classes that are coming up. We've got um, some good ones. Uh, Julie's gonna be doing the etch in a bag which is like a 20 minute, very low tech etching class, which you can do at home with just really simple materials and get a really beautiful plate for if you're running it through the rolling mill or if you're just wanting to get a really cool etch on brass and copper. Um, those work really well. 
also uh, for, um, oops, let me get the, there we go, get that to go away. So let's see, we've got alternative stone setting prongs and pedestals coming up on Thursday. Um, that is uh, great for all kinds of miscellaneous shapes and sizes of stones and or found objects or enamels. Um, it's uh, making uh, like a prong setting really simple. So if you have something that's, you know, a really beautiful stone that you don't want to set in a bezel because you want to show off the edges, it's a really secure setting. So one of my favorites, it's extremely adaptable. Um, we've also got the back set coming up on June 2nd, which is like that one right there, little back set stone settings. So these are really good because they make like a little picture frame around your stones. Um, it's a little bit different than back setting or, or like, a, sorry, like a upside down setting. Back setting usually is done almost like a picture frame. Um, then we got Etch in a Bag on June 11th, um, adding gold vessels coming up on Saturday the 16th of June, uh, Diamond Burrs Demystified, which is going to be great. Oh, sorry, that's on Thursday, uh, June 16th. Uh, adding gold vessels is coming up. So we're going to work with gold, gold alloys, um, working with stuff that you can find very easily to make vessels out of, and uh, gold fill. So we'll talk about adding that little splash of gold to your work. Uh, Diamond Burrs Demystified, and we're really excited to have uh, a new kind of class coming up that's going to be uh, fused glass jewelry. So Helen Cowart, one of our uh, Little Metal Box owners, hey Kathleen, is going to be doing fused glass jewelry, um, working with kilns and showing you sort of how to um, lay things out so you can make your own cabochons out of glass, uh, what they do. and. Uh, yes, the Gold Vessels class is online. It's on uh, June 16th, so that'll be a lot of fun. Um, and I kind of demystify a lot of that for you and give you some, some interesting alternatives and make it really easy to add a little bit of gold to your work in a little bit more affordable way. So it adds um, some preciousness to the pieces, it adds more color and pop to the pieces, and um, gives your, um, gives your uh, clientele another option for color. Uh, so for people that are like, oh, I don't wear silver, I only wear gold. So if they want something that's a gold color, it makes it really easy to add. So yes, it is greasy. Greasy Mac. Yeah, you bet. Um, and let's see, but we're really excited about Helen's Glass class. That's going to be great. So, you know, small scale jewelry use. Um, so setting them as cabs, setting them on things like a pedestal setting. So that'll be fun. Um, working with gold fill, again, another great affordable option if you're wanting to add gold to your line. Um, and then we have wax carving for stone setting coming up in July. And we just added cuttlefish bone casting and gravity casting on July 17th. So for those of you that want to do some small scale casting in your small studio, this is a great class. You don't have to use wax. You can use uh, direct pour, a uh, simple, if you've got a torch that can melt some metal, um, and you probably have a torch. If you have a torch and you've got some metal, you probably have melted it before doing something that, that you did wrong. So <laughs> I like to think of that as an advanced skill for casting. Um, but if your you know, torch can melt a little bit of metal, then you can do casting in your studio. And cuttlefish bone and gravity casting is very low tech. It's been done around the world for 6,000 years. So if they can do it, you can do it. Um, I really love the cuttlefish. Most of my, a lot of my work incorporates cuttlefish bone cast pieces and uh, alternatively cast pieces. So I hope you will jump in for that. I have a feeling it's going to fill really quickly. So we just posted it, so jump in. Um, also too, we've got um, a couple of classes that we're going to be adding that are uh, core curriculum and that are uh, really great classes for people who just need a refresher or are looking at um, uh, sort of trying to sort of learn new skills and the basic skills and get those under their belt. So we're going to be adding some of those over the next couple of weeks. And one of the classes that's already up is the Studio Safety and Chemicals class. Um, it's a class that we recorded uh, this last fall, but we felt that it was important enough that you know everybody had access to it. So the class is only $10 and it makes it really affordable for you to, to watch and learn about ventilation and lighting and chemical disposal and things like that. And it's just one of those things we felt that was really, really critical for a lot of people. Um, if you're working with jewelry in your house or your home or a small studio, 
please take the materials uh, say or the studio safety chemicals class because it's um, it's there you can watch it anytime you have access to it for as long as it's up uh, which is you know as far as we're concerned indefinitely so um, you know do yourself a favor buy the class you can watch it whenever you don't have to it's not like a particular day um, and then you have access to go back and watch it again if you need to but you know if you're taking classes at a you know at an institution or continuing education or just doing it as a hobby in your home it's really worth it to understand what all of these chemicals and gases are so that you can work really a lot more safely so please if you haven't taken that um, and you're taking classes with us we, we really recommend it just for your own peace of mind and safety so that you'll um, be safe out there be safe out there so um, anyway yeah if you um, if you have any questions or if there's a tool tip that you want us to do coming up email us direct message us uh, here on Instagram and we're happy to answer your questions and tell you all about the stuff we're working on and, uh, and what's going on if you're in Seattle uh, we've got um, Building C, where uh, my studio is located, and AJ Power, who teaches our drawing classes, who's going to be doing that this fall, too. Um, AJ and I are going to be here uh, for our open house on June 3rd and 4th. Uh, you can find that uh, if you look at my Instagram, Jennifer Stenhouse, um, you'll see the advertisement for Building C Studios uh, artist sale. If you're here in Seattle, we'd love to see you. Introduce yourself and say hi. Um, so if you're one of our students and you're here, on by show me some stuff that you've been working on um, so anyway um, I hope you guys have a great evening uh, as always all of our tool tips are on here as well as on our YouTube channel there's over 60 uh, tool tips that you can watch and learn all kinds of stuff from me from Julia from Chris from Michelle from you know a bunch of our different instructors so um, so hop over to YouTube and just watch some tool tips and see you know what you need to know Oh, polishing and finishing class. Yeah, um, I usually do that in the fall, so I will. I will add that. Actually, thank you. Um, yeah, yeah, finishing and polishing class. Absolutely, um, have that coming up. Um, so, if you are again, if you're interested in you know something in particular, let us know because a lot of times you know we can um, we can turn on a dime and make things happen. So yeah, absolutely, you're welcome. <laughs> so yeah, we want to be able to help you guys get the information that you need. Um, we're always interested in making sure that our students have as much information as we can give them at an affordable price and make it accessible for you guys in a lot of different ways. So um, yeah, the Burr class. Well, I've got the Diamond Burr class coming up on June 18th and uh, Burr's Demystified, I'll probably be doing again this fall. So we usually try and kind of you know spread them out a little bit. But yes, the Burr class is coming up and Diamond Burrs is coming up June 18th and it is on the schedule at littlemetalfoxes.com. So, hey. All right, you guys, have a great evening. I will see you later. Work safe out there and do go get that video if you haven't already watched it because seriously, it'll, it'll make you feel safer and um, yeah, more confident about what you're gonna do in your studio. So, all right, all right. See you guys later, Mwah. bye.